Hi, I'm Nicholas Bertner, the director of Working with Nature Permaculture School. And today, I want to talk about something very special. We have a global event happening, coming up very soon, called the March Against Monsanto. I wanted to give you a tool and give you some, some very crucial information that will arm you with the good knowledge where you can really uh, be a benefit to your family and yourself and to the people around you. We're going to paint a picture of the rest of the story that goes with the GMOs. Uh, what we do in our current system is we have a, an ecosystem and we shave it down and then we put up rows of crops. So how a plant actually uptakes its nutrients is not alone. The plant doesn't do it on its own. A plant makes a symbiotic relationship with something called funguses, oftentimes it's mycorrhizal fungus and then mycelium. And so that mycelium network is under the ground and it is massive, it's huge. Uh, one square inch of soil can hold up to eight miles of fungal network at one cell wall thick. And that network is transmitting energy and information and nutrients because raw nutrient the raw nutrient, it comes from rocks. And on the end of mycelium are these special acid tips. And mycelium actually dissolves the rock naturally and then transfers the nutrient to the plant. So the plant makes a call. It says, hey, well, it needs, it needs carbon first and foremost. It gets that from the atmosphere. Then it needs the big three. It's called NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Mm -hmm. And we think around 25 other micronutrients. It probably needs the whole periodic table and elements that we haven't even discovered. So what happens is the plant says, hey, I need manganese, boron, zinc, magnesium, whatever it happens to be. And the mycelium network is bringing that into the plant or the tree. And in exchange, because mm -hmm. they're working together, in exchange through the sun and photosynthesis, the plant manufactures starches and sugars and gives that over to the fungal network. So they work in conjunction. So when we shave down that ecosystem, when we shave it down, we're exposing the soil. See, nature never really tills. The closest thing to tilling that nature does is chickens or pigs. And they don't really till, they either wallow or scratch. We go in and we break the fungal strands and expose them and put them out of undercover and into the sun's rays that bake them. The UV rays bake mycelium and bacteria, funguses and bacteria. So that's our first like onslaught onto the soil life. Then we put in rows of crops and for the first couple of years, they're really good. We have an exceptional abundance, an exceptional harvest because we've created a lot of extra life in the soil. But since it's not covered, it's not staying alive and it's not producing more life through decay processes. So after a few years, we get bad crops, they get diseases, they're weak, we're losing crops. So we have devised a system through chemistry where we have artificial fertilizers. And artificial fertilizers really we only put the big three in, NPK. But through chemistry, we made them water soluble. So when we put them on the fields and on the crops, when we irrigate or when it rains, the NPK then becomes water soluble. And instead of the, the hair net roots that are going out and making network connections to get nutrition, the tap root which drinks water is then drinking the NPK. So we're tricking the plant into taking the nutrition. So this is the equivalent of us on an IV. We're alive, but we're not healthy. So we've tricked it into taking up the artificial fertilizer, not through its natural process. So the plant then gets massive, it gets big. But when you go out to the Serengeti or to the wilds of Africa and you see massive uh, top predators like the lions or the leopards or cheetahs, and you see them around a herd, they don't go after the strongest buffalo or or bison or gazelle. They take the, the weak one. So when we make the nutrition, or, or not the, the lack of nutrition, when we put artificial nutrition into the vegetation, it expands the cell walls. And to our eyes, it looks amazing. But to the predator pests, those are all mutants. So they come in and they fly in, and we've just given them a buffet line. So we're putting up rows and rows of crops, which were probably GMO crops. and 
we're giving the pests exactly what they're looking for with no, with no protection for the crops with the other plants and other animals in the ecosystem. Well, that becomes a problem. We get an overabundance of those, so we've come up with something else to solve that, which are pesticides. It's another chemical. It kills the bugs, makes them toxic, and they put, go to the ground, and we put another layer of chemical on the ground. We've already put, we've already exposed the soil, exposed the microbiology, it's baking from the sun. Then we put in artificial fertilizers, which is a chemical, and then we put pesticides on, and after a while, these little green things start popping up from the soil. And especially if it's over plowed soil, we call them weeds. Well, nature is amazing. Nature's very resilient. Nature has a function for all of its plants. So what we call weeds, nature actually calls them pioneering species, or we can call them pioneering species too. And what happens is those are typically trying to heal the soil from symptoms. So one of the symptoms is we've depleted the nutrition out. We've uncovered it. So a lot of those first weeds that pop up are gonna be legumes. Legumes fix nitrogen into the soil. Other plants pop up so they can create biomass and humic material that will create soil life. So weeds aren't really weeds, they're pioneers. They're like the first astronauts to the moon. They're going in and establishing soil biology so they can get back to what they once were. Well, we've created a solution for that. We've created herbicides, which happens to be the worst of all of them. Worse than artificial fertilizers, worse than pesticides. The herbicides are really toxic. What ends up happening is we take a seed and we have genetically modified it to drink toxin from seed. That's what a GMO is, a genetically modified organism. <coughs> It drinks toxin, and as it's grown, it's sprayed with all these chemicals. Then it's harvested, sprayed with radiation typically, put on a truck that is then forced to ripen on its way down to the processing plant. It gets to the processing plant, and then the nutrients are extracted, and we add preservatives and anti-aging and anti-caking agents, and then it's put in a wrapper and put on a shelf. So what you're buying at the supermarket and what you're buying at the stores isn't food, it's crack. This is what's happening. This is to fill in the story for you. If you're feeling sick, if you're feeling emotionally unhealthy, if you're feeling out of whack all the time, you're not alone. Worldwide, this is happening. There's no nutrition in the food. It is all poison, it's all toxin. So if you really want to solve these issues, we need to start marching against Monsanto, but even after that, after that, we're going to start looking at how to design our lifestyle to where we intake nutrition and goodness for us. We'll have epidemics of health. We'll have epidemic of mental health. When we start feeding ourselves nutrient-dense food, which is the next phase of food after we realize that organics aren't really making us any healthier. We need to put the life back in the soil, cover it up, and then have that life create nutrient density into the food. If you want to know more about this, go local. Find the, the permaculture school that's near you. Right? Permaculture creates a system that designs nutrition into your lifestyle. And it, it, even if it uses GMOs, which it doesn't, the natural systems will take them over and nutrition will be replaced. Share this video because more people really need to know what's going on. I love you guys. I think you rock. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you later.